I will talk today about the research of this research group in general and about citizen science proje projects in particular. To explain this, I will start first with um, a different line of research, um, the one uh, of the Cognitive Neuroinformatics group. And the approach is twofold. So we have um, one aspect that is empirical research. It's research, um, mainly brain research or neuroscientific research. And on the other hand, we use um, the findings from this empirical research um, to develop biology-inspired intelligent technical systems. Um, so one part is um, to explore, to investigate subsystems of the human brain, like the visual system. Um, how does seeing work? How do, do the eyes work? How do they connect to the brain? How do the information coming from the eyes are computed in the human brain? And one thing um, that is less known um, or can be less experienced when we look around is that we don't have such a colorful and clear um, field of view. This is just an illusion. Um, the part that can be seen in color um, and clear is about the size of your thumbnail. So this is tiny. However, we have the illusion of this perfect um, colorful field of view. And this is um, performed by the human brain um, by a trick. Uh, it collects many samples from the outside world, visual samples, and processes them in series um, to connect this, um, to have this fusion of, of this full picture. And we investigated the visual system, um, the way how senses interact, like audition and vision, how do they interact, um, how navigation um, in the human brain works, how space is represented in the human brain, and how adaptive uh, mechanisms in the human brain work. And we try to transfer these findings of this, uh, the brain subsystems to technical systems in um, form of algorithms. We have, as, as a demonstrator, we have a, a robot that mimics human saccadic vision um, to classify where it is. Um, this robot also uses uh, audition um, and a combination of vision and audition um, to find out um, where a sound comes from, uh, similar to the way humans do. Um, this is just a demonstrator. Um, we also um, use this technology often um, like in assistive, sy assistive systems um, for, uh, for example, elderly people or handicapped people. We use this in autonomous driving and in technical systems um, for outer space missions. One of our new approaches is the citizen science approach. And um, this is a flexible concept that can be adapted and applied in diverse situations and disciplines. And it means that in general um, citizens are actively involved in the scientific uh, process. So they are not uh, simply data collectors helping the professional scientists for free. They um, should be integrated as contributors, as collaborators, or even as project leaders to have a meaningful role in the citizen science project. The main thing is um, that science, sci citizen science projects should have a genuine scientific outcome. So it's not a hobby project. Uh, it has to meet the quali quality criteria for um, good science. Um, and on the other hand, it feeds back to the citizens. They are integrated in, the, in every step of the process um, they learn about the research methods. They learn a lot um, beyond the academic systems just by participating in the scientific research. And this also helps um, scientists 
to bring more transparency, professional scientists to bring more transparency to research. And um, it also helps the citizens, the citizen scientists, um, to find out, to, to be able to discriminate which research they can believe in and which, which not. So, um, because they are more competent in science in general. An important point is that um, professional scientists, as well as the citizen scientists, benefit from taking part. So they, they both um, have a, a very clear benefit. Um, it's not uh, just using the citizen as a data collector. And um, the citizen scientists may, if they wish, participate in multiple stages of the process. So they may um, formulate the hypotheses, they may be integrated in data evaluation, data gathering, anal analysis, or um, communication in the end. Citizen science project data should be made publicly available as um, open data, so everyone one can um, benefit from this data collection. Everyone can use the data for his own evaluation. We have a number of uh, citizen science projects which are funded by the Ministry of Research and Education. Um, and so we had this first funding period with, I think, 13 uh, projects which were funded. One was um, the, the were recordings of nightingales all over Germany with smartphone apps to find out whether nightingales have um, regional dialects when singing. So one, one project is about air pollution, about environmental issues. And um, so this is about um, creating a map of um, fine dust of particulate matter concentrations all over Germany. I told before, um, in most of the projects, the, the citizens can participate um, at every stage of the research pro process. As data collectors, many of the pro projects have smartphone apps um, to make it easier to collect the data with sp special functions like taking photographs. Others have um, DIY sensor kits um, to, to measure the concentration uh, of the particulate matter. And um, one project uh, that's not from Germany, but, but uh, um, an interesting example from Japan is um, or um, started after the Fukushima uh, nuclear, nuclear power plant event when people started uh, to make a DIY Geiger counter kit available and they made it to create a radiation map of Japan. In Germany there's a website and, um, that's um, administrated by Bürgerschaften Wissen, um, which means citizens create knowledge uh, and there is a list of um, many of the citizen science, almost all of the citizen science projects um, in which citizens can inform themselves uh, how to participate, what is necessary, if this is su suitable for children. There are many projects that are um, suitable to be integrated in school education, for example. In, in science, um, the output often is a, a publication. Um, where the results are presented to the public. And this also is important in citizen science, that the citizen scientists are also, um, or can be authors, um, like professional scientists. And in, in the Bee Observer project, beekeepers take part um, because they are um, in contact with the bees and the bees themselves are in contact with nature. So they have a radius of, of about uh, five kilometers around their home, their hives. And they are interesting insects to investigate because they always come back home. Many other insects don't come back home. They come back home to their hives 
and we have the possibility to measure there and they tell us um, by the means of sensor data tell us stories about the environment, about the surroundings, about the quality of the surroundings. Uh, there are many many synergistic effects in citizen science uh, projects. So um, you can gather data as a professional scientist which you would never be able to gather alone. So when you have uh, hundreds or thousands of citizens collecting data, um, this, is, this is almost impossible from, from the perspective without any help. On the other hand, the citizen scientists are integrated, are included in the research process. So they learn, this is a, a way of education. Um, they, this is a way um, to get more transparency into science from the professional scientist's perspective. This is a way to communicate what you are doing as a professional scientist to the citizens. Um, this is a way to um, make issues that are very clear for, for professional scientists, um, to make them believable to the public, to, to the citizens, uh, and understandable, so it's uh, much. You have the possibility of a much deeper understanding of the um, scientific aspects. The project started about three years ago with the first funding period, and um, there will be a second funding period um, with um, many p things included. Um, all researchers and um, all organizers have learned from the first periods. So um, this is going to be um, this is going to develop um, a lot in, into a, a greater uh, and larger research process.